Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we have a uh, smaller group today, but we have lots of loyal, dedicated people and parents and staff. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, we wanted to start our meeting today with um, our introductions. Um, so I am Jill Connor. Hello. <laughs> I am the president, and I have a great board here. With if you guys would like to introduce yourselves and give a wave so we all know who you are. Sure. Yep. I'm Eric. I'm one of the vice presidents. I've got a daughter, Dora, in fifth grade. Hi, everyone. Kristen Hoshpark, also one of the vice presidents. <laughs> and I have sons in first grade and fifth grade. Hi there, I'm Brooke Kenny. I'm the secretary. I have a child in third grade. And that is our board. Thank you so much. Um, we also wanted to introduce our in-person attendees. Uh, I'm uh, Enrique. I'm one of the parents here tonight. Uh, my son is in second grade. Great, thank you. And Jenny's my son, Sarah. Hi, I'm Jessica. Um, excuse me, my daughter's in third grade. Brianne, I have a son in third grade. Alex, I have the same son. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ellie, I have a third grade daughter and a fifth grade son. Great, thank you so much. Um, and uh, if our online attendees would like to introduce themselves. Um, we could start with Mr. Nelson. That would be fantastic. Good evening, everyone. Again, I'm Joel Nelson, proud principal of Greenville Elementary School. Good morning. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see Alexi, Mr. Dimitri. Uh, would anybody else like to introduce themselves? Any other parents or teachers? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. I am Tammy. I have a, uh, a child in fifth grade. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Jill, I have a daughter in fifth grade. Great. Thank you. Any other parents or teachers that would like to introduce themselves? Okay, well, just let us know uh, if you have a comment, uh, you can raise your hand. We have somebody monitoring the chat, so feel free to put your comments in there or your questions or raise your hand so that we can uh, involve you as much as possible uh, in our meeting. Um, okay, two, yeah. So thank you. Um, we just want to make sure that you know that at any point you have a question, it does not have to be during this meeting. Um, you can email us at greenbeltespta at gmail.com. You can also go onto our website, which you can find through the school website. Um, and we are eager to know what you guys care about and what are your concerns and how we can improve. So thank you very much for reaching out. Um, we need to approve our minutes from our February meeting that was sent out uh, earlier with the um, with the agenda. And did anybody have any questions? Or uh, actually, I will let I will let uh, Eric take this. Okay, I can uh, I can do a quick recap of the minutes. Usually, we don't go through through them in detail because they're posted on our website. Um, I'll do a, a, again, a quick recap um, of what we were talking about at the last meeting. And if anybody at the end, if anybody has any corrections that they want to make to the meeting minutes, uh, then let us know. And then we'll finish up by voting to accept the minutes. So at the last meeting, we'll just kind of go through here fairly quickly. We had the principal's report from Principal Nelson. He talked about several topics like the honor roll assembly and the upcoming uh, field trip for fifth graders. And then our treasurer, uh, Sarah, gave the treasurer's report and she gave the, the current balances that the PTA has. And she also talked about several related uh, things that are going on, uh, such as the upcoming uh, fundraiser where the PTA will be taking donations from families and, uh, and giving them to Value Village in exchange for, uh, for 
a, a modest amount of money that they'll donate to us. <clears throat> and then I gave uh, vice principals or vice vice president's report and talked about a couple of things, including how to sign up as a volunteer uh, to be a, an official volunteer with the PGCPS so that you can uh, help out regularly in the classroom or help as a chaperone on a field trip, and things like that. Uh, we talked briefly about whether uh, uh, recess equipment, play equipment at recess was an issue or not, was a problem. And uh, I also introduced the Givebacks program, which is a way that you can do online shopping and, and the companies will donate a small fraction of your purchases to the PTA. And more information about that is on our website. Yeah, we can go on down. And uh, Kristen gave uh, her vice president's report and talked about the spring fair and the entrepreneurship fair that fourth and fifth graders will be doing both later on this school year. And you'll hear more about both of those uh, in this meeting. And Jill gave the president's report and talked about several things, including uh, 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 we need needing volunteers for the book sale committee for the Labor Day, the big Labor Day book sale, and also for the nominating committee. And we still need volunteers for both of those. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh -huh. And then we had a question and answer session that touched on several different topics, especially a uh, discussion of the STEM fair program uh, for the third, fourth, and fifth graders, and also discussion of the foreign language program here in Greenbelt Elementary. And uh, ah, and then Ingrid Cohen Haas gave an informational presentation on the Greenbelt Association for the Visual Arts (GAVA) and talked about the different uh, artistic programs that they do here in the school with PTA uh, funding for support. Okay, so that covers our February meeting minutes. And does anybody have a uh, any corrections to make? Either use your hand live in person or using the Zoom feature to raise your hand. Okay. No. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. No. I second the motion. This is Eric again. And uh, Brooke, how do you want to do the voting? Um, let me have everyone who's an I raise their hand. Sure. And a lot of people there's a poll. Oh, poll cool already. Nice. Seven, so, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. And how many on four? Twelve total. Thank you, everyone. Any days? I'm sorry, excuse me. Any names? Uh no, no mine. No. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, so we have done our approval of minutes. Next, we have our pitch report from Mr. Nelson. All right, good evening once again to each and all. Um, I first want to, um, on behalf of uh, the staff of Greenbelt, um, certainly thank the executive board and all PTA members uh, for your consistent support. Um, I know later in the agenda, um, I see a note regarding uh, additional uh, supports that uh, the PTA is providing to um, our teachers, and it's greatly appreciated, so thank you. Um, spring is near. Um, along with the spring comma assessments, um, our, our fifth grade is currently taking MISA, which is the uh, state assessment for science. Um, MCAP certainly is coming in the springtime field trips. Um, field day promotions, et cetera. All this information will be relayed to families um, within the next two to four weeks. Um, and so there's a need for reminders, uh, reminders of just uh, being punctual to school, um, you know, being prepared for learning, uh, making good decisions, uh, being kind. You know, I, I think, um, you know, uh, all of us, uh, do good jobs, but we just want to consistently make that reminder. The spring's a time where, you know, everybody gets animated and excited, et cetera. So uh, those are the things that are going to uh, help positively impact the learning environment. Um, going back to field trips, uh, yes, the fifth grade is having a trip to Kent Schmidt coming up. Our grade four is actually um, attending um, the Greenbelt Theater as other grades will, and that's coming up 
this week as well. Um, another point or note is at the uh, end of this week, March 10th, is uh, National SEL, Social Emotional Learning Day. And there's various activities throughout uh, various classrooms uh, that will help engage the children in that. Um, we also, uh, next week within the building, will be celebrating March Madness. And just in short, you know, uh, implementing engaging activities for our students during this time. Uh, again, these assessments are coming up, so uh, we want to be innovative. Uh, we want to actively instructionally engage children. So there's a number of things next week that are occurring. Anything from picture day to uh, athletes and mathematicians. Uh, and there's a various schedule uh, that you all will see uh, in the WAG that comes out on Fridays. Uh, just a couple of additional items. Uh, career day is March 30th. Um, there's been a great number of supports uh, via parents regarding this. There are still some uh, opening or remaining spots if there's anybody interested in um, being a part of our career day. Uh, if so, uh, we want you to reach out to uh, Mrs. Hudson and um, I can actually, um, if somebody can actually share her email address inside the chat. Otherwise, after I'm done speaking, I can certainly cut and paste the email if anybody's uh, interested in that. Um, and then lastly, um, Maryland State, um, the Maryland report card uh, was supposed to come out uh, on the 28th, uh, but it'll likely come out in the next few days. Uh, the Maryland report card essentially rates each and every public school in the state of Maryland, elementary, middle, and high school on a five-star rating of one, two, three, four, or five, five being the highest. Um, last year, in the last couple of years, uh, we've been at a, a rating of a four. Uh, this year, uh, it's embargoed, but um, I have good reason to believe that we still remain a four. Uh, with that being said, um, there'll be additional conversations in terms of what that actually means, uh, how our children and how our, our staff has actually performed, uh, and I'll certainly carry that information over you uh, to you, Jill PTA, so that we can actually uh, set up something uh, where parents can have um, additional information on that. Uh, there is actually access to it, uh, but some of it may need some extra explaining. Um, and that's uh, all I have for right now. Thank you very much. I have a question. Can you Sorry. hear? Uh, so, uh, from last week, uh, we discussed the uh, STEM fair, and there was a question as to why we do the STEM fair. Uh, uh, is it a requirement that um, that we do that, or is that something optional that we do? That's a good question. You know, uh, the STEM fair does seem to have uh, lost a lot of interest in many areas. Uh, the STEM fair, for so many, myself included, is. Uh, something that is um, uh, necessary. Uh, it provides inquiry-based type learning. Um, as it relates to fifth grade, fifth graders are still engaged in it. Uh, it used to be where the science slash STEM fair uh, was school-wide uh, in, in just about all elementary schools, and that has actually decreased. Um, so in terms of whether or not it's mandatory, it is something that uh, is encouraged. It is something that is occurring with the fifth grade. Uh, as, where we go from here, uh, as it relates to curriculum, as it relates to state mandates. Um, I do not know that information, but again, our fifth grade is heavily engaged in it, but it is much more of a, uh, a piece uh, um, that's designed in the school, but so much more is uh, necessary outside of school as well. Uh, so I don't have a deliberate answer in terms of, is it mandatory throughout the county or throughout the state? Uh, but it is something that uh, we do uh, still engage in uh, at Greenbelt, at least for our fifth grade. Great, thank you. Um, and there was also a comment, if people could introduce themselves before they speak, that would be fantastic. Um, okay, were there any other questions from people online or in the room? I just wanted to say thanks for, uh, this is Jessica O'Rourke. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for the attention for so social emotional learning on Friday, that's nice to hear. And it was, um, emphasized on other days as well, but. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. Was there anything else that you want to mention? All set? No, thank you.
Okay, great. Um, thank you. Uh, we are going to move on to our treasurer's report. Our treasurer is unable to make it today. So Eric McKenzie, our former treasurer, now vice president, will take that over. I'm just going to bring up the report for him. Hi, from the agenda. It's linked in the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jill. So hopefully everybody can see the uh, the treasurer support spreadsheet on the screen. And uh, highlighted in yellow is our total balance right now, $24,800, which is pretty close to where it was at last month's meeting as well. There hasn't been a lot of overall change. Um, highlighted in yellow, lower down, we have the income that we've had since the past meeting. So we had a, a very, very kind, generous donation from one of our PTA families of $500. And uh, then we also had $24 of income from a program called Good Shop which is another one of these Amazon Smile-like programs, similar to givebacks. And then our expenses uh, since the last meeting. Um, every For every PTA meeting, we have a babysitter on site so that parents can bring their kids if that helps them to be able to attend the meeting. So it helps to make things more convenient. Uh, so we pay $50 every meeting for babysitting. And our other expenses have been on uh, staff t-shirts and honor roll ribbons. And, what did you want to say about this? Sure. So we um, had intended to get staff t-shirts to them, uh, to everyone in the school by uh, staff appreciation week in December. That didn't quite happen. We finally got it um, done uh, just, I don't know, maybe a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. So all of the teachers have brand new um, school t-shirts sponsored by us. And then for the principal honor roll recipient, we also purchased um, about 100 ribbons that the children got to take home with them that were presented during the assembly. So these are both things that I think were much appreciated. Thanks, Brooke. Um, and then the only other thing that we spent money on in the past month was on a, a conference microphone, which is hopefully helping you all to hear us a little better. It's it's something that just plugs into Jill's computer. Uh, so that's that's the treasurer's report. Okay. And if there are any questions, you can put them in the chat and, and try and respond to them. And other than that, I think we can move on. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, which leads us to the vice president's report. <laughs> okay. I put on my vice president hat. And uh, <clears throat> so two, two things I wanted to talk about. And one was, um, that we're interested in getting a credit card for the PTA. Um, so right now, the only way that the PTA has to to pay for anything is by is through checks, and as you can imagine, that gets pretty inconvenient a lot of the time because we're often making purchases uh, at grocery stores or doing online shopping, and um, and the way that we do that right now is that it's usually one of the board members or another volunteer is having to pay up front and then subsequently get reimbursed by the PTA, but by check. And, and so that's a big nuisance for everybody. And uh, uh, we, now up until a few years ago, the state level, there's a state level PTA organization, we're under their umbrella. And they didn't allow local PTAs to have credit cards for a long time, but then they finally decided it was okay. And this year, was the, they, they gave us guidance on how to do it, and they set, a, uh, set up a set of standard policies. And so the very first step to, for us to get a credit card is to first get approval from you all, from the members of the PTA. Um, and so we've set this up as what's called a standing rule. And so standing rules are kind of like appendices or extensions to our bylaws. Um, this is our very first standing rule. Apparently some PTAs have lots of these, but as far as I know, we've never had one before, but now we do, or we could, if you all approve it. So this standing rule is uh, uh, has all the different rules for what uh, uh, that we would follow for having a credit card or a debit card. 
And these are all taken, almost all of these are taken directly from the state level PTA organizations policies. Uh, there's only one that, that I added, which is B. And I, I created this from another PTA's uh, standing rule for credit cards because I thought it made sense, which was setting the credit limit for the credit card to be no more than half of our expected income for each year. And, uh, and the only other one of these policies that I think is particularly worth pointing out is D, which uh, says that the card can be used only by the uh, members of the executive board, the elected officers. Um, which is so so it doesn't allow, for example, a um, an individual volunteer or a committee chair to use the card, which from my point of view is a bit unfortunate because I would like to have that flexibility. But but even so, having having the ability for the officers to be able to use a credit card would make a big difference for us. And um, Eric, would this be mm -hmm. a credit card or a debit card? Well, that's a good question. And uh, my. I've been thinking along the lines of a credit card, but I also haven't thought too deeply about this. So if you or anybody else has thoughts about pros and cons between a credit card or a debit card, you know, feel free to uh, uh, to mention them now. They don't, they don't have any rule. I mean, it, we yeah, can choose whatever we prefer. I see. Yeah, again, this was lifted almost directly from the state level policies. So they're equally fine with credit cards or debit cards, apparently. And have you spoke with a federal credit union or the good operating union? Not yet. That would be the next step. Yeah. Um, I was waiting until we had actual membership approval and then I figured we'd go from there. So, <laughs> yeah. And I did create a poll. We also have. Uh, okay. Uh, so I did create a poll so that everybody can end or can. Okay. I ask a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, so there would still be the option to write a check, right? This yep. is not replacing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering. I also have the same question about a debit card. It seems like it has some just built-in safety features that you can't. I, the limit is the call or right on a credit card, but um, and I wonder, like, for teacher staff appreciation week, would it be possible to add? the chair for that as a board member so that that person could also utilize the credit card. I feel like that, yeah. that's a big, yeah, be a big help. Yeah. Um, so just, hopefully everybody. Just I'm saying for the future, like I would still approve the credit card now, but that's just some, something to consider. Eric, would you be able to restate for the? Yeah, uh, so hopefully everybody heard Jessica's comments, um, one of which was um, what it would be for questions was whether it would be possible for uh, a, a committee chair, especially the teacher and staff appreciation committee chair, who's often involved in purchases, uh, to be elevated onto the board of directors for the purpose of being able to use the card. And, and the answer, I actually looked into this just a few hours ago, so I, I have fresh information. The answer, unfortunately, is no. Um, the reason being that um, the board of directors and the executive committee are defined a little differently. So that technically, so the executive committee is just the elected officers, the president and vice presidents and so on. Um, the board of directors is that same group plus certain committee chairs and uh, technically also the principal or the principal's representative. Um, but the, the rules are very are specific about it. Um, the credit card's only being usable by the executive board, referring specifically to the elected officers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, but the, this, well, the could state, we choose so, though to make whoever's agreed to be that chair a co-secretary, <laughs> something like that? I mean, we have two vice like, presidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have to elect them, but yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that we don't want to. We want to be careful not to let the better be the enemy of the good here, because they're. I feel like if you're making a bunch of purchases within a short time frame, as long as people don't mind using their personal credit card and getting a check back. You know, if over the course of two or three weeks I put a whole bunch of PTA stuff on my credit card and then I go to Eric's house and he writes me a check for like the whole thing, the whole thing. that's, you know, like that's not super, it would be best if I could just take the credit card. But, mm -hmm. but if that's not an option, then like going through other shenanigans to like make that possible might in the end just be more complicated than just, I mean, yeah. I mean, certainly a credit card is better for like onesie twosies, like if we're just buying shirts or this or that, like that. And the 
executive board can do it. Like that's, I'm in favor of having a credit card in general, but yeah. I don't know that it's worth enabling the committee chair to do it. Oh, oh this is Ellie, by the way. Sorry, I was <laughs> Can anybody else have comments or questions? Well, the, just another comment along those lines. The board member can go with the committee chair to purchase too, like we did the last time. Um, yeah. That, you know, that seems relatively easy. I would maybe advocate for a debit card in like the 30s. Okay, Ellie, mm -hmm. um, in the 30 seconds I've spent thinking about this because I know there's been sometimes it's been a rough handover from year to year with treasurers um, mm -hmm. or just board members in general. And I would worry about carrying a balance on a credit card that got neglected if they're, you know, as you as that baton gets tossed. Where I feel like a debit card, if somebody, if the treasurer's position for whatever reason is unfilled for several months, there's less of a risk that like bad things happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I looked into credit cards some months ago with so our, our PTA banks with the uh, Greenbelt Federal Credit Union. And the last time I looked into this, they had a credit card option that seemed to work a lot like a debit card, where you couldn't take out, you couldn't charge more than your uh, than the money you had in the account, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but more, more generally speaking, I, I personally don't have a lot of experience with debit cards. Are, are they as broadly useful as credit cards? Can they be used in every situation that credit cards can? Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. I think so. And then the protections as well, since we're, and I don't know what bank um, our accounts are with for the PTA funds, but you still like just have the same securities. If someone were to, uh, we had someone who tracked our account and was through money or otherwise, we'd still be able to have that sort of protection yeah. to have that money reinstated or reimbursed back in our account. So yeah. they, they do have the protection, but I have my personal debit card information stolen and the issue which may not be an issue for us is that it does take I mean at that point they've actually taken cash right it's not a charge that you could just argue um was fraud they've taken your cash so then you need to go through the steps to get the cash back and sometimes you don't get all of it back unfortunately and it can be a cash flow problem if you're you know Paying bills or whatever. So that's just something. But there is, you know, um, there's another level in the, of protection having a debit card, and then it does usually have a spending limit on it. Whereas a credit card, if you have a high limit, you get into real trouble there. But positive and negative on both sides. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with them. Credit card versus debit card. I so we'll we'll look into this more, and my hope is also that uh, Sarah West, our treasurer, will have some insights or suggestions. Um, I believe we've talked about it before, and she was a big fan. Um, I also feel like I've heard of more fees with debit cards versus credit cards, mm -hmm. and I know our goal would be to have zero fees. So I guess we'll just have to see what the bank offers. Yeah. GFC does not charge a fee for a credit or for a debit card that's associated oh. with a bank account there. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. That's all right. I'm pretty sure we don't pay a fee. Because <laughs> it's associated with our checking account. What's that? I thought, I thought it just, well, I don't know. It's like I thought it maybe depends on where you use it. Like the oh, that could be. Bible. That could be. Make sure yeah. you're just taking cash out of an ATM, but if you go to like the pizza joint, you know, yeah, they would, yeah, yeah, um, I saw the little one, and they, maybe they don't like debit, uh, but I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe we should just vote to see if we even want to do it yeah. in general and then yeah. like pass that figure out if you fail. Okay, go ahead and walk. 
Okay, so I motion that we uh, approve the standing rule on credit and debit cards. We'll need a second. Second. Okay. And that was Alex. So glad you figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the people who approve, if people in the room want to raise hands, people online would like to vote. Uh, remember, you do have to be a PTA member in order to vote. Otherwise, you can abstain. Okay. So that is 15 yeses and one abstain. Any okay. nays? Any nays? No, just an abstain. Thank you. Um, so that is passing. That passed. Great. Yay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. And um, we also wanted to do a quick update for the advocates advocacy committee that we talked about last week. Yeah, I can speak on that. And uh, so it's it's looking increasingly the odds are looking better that we'll have an advocacy committee. Uh, we have a few interested people who are meeting uh, tomorrow evening on Zoom. And uh, if you might be interested in being on the advocacy committee, whether you're able to join tomorrow's meeting or not, just send us an email and we'll get you linked in. Um, it's still early days, so we don't have a set scope yet for what the advocacy committee will work on. The two general categories that can make sense, so we could do either or both. Uh, one is uh, developing priorities at the school level or the district level, you know, some issue that we want to uh, look into, potentially support, you know, see if the PTA as a whole wants to support. Uh, and that can be on all kinds of things. And there in particular is where we would need more volunteers because we'd be very people power limited. There's all kinds of things that we could potentially work on, but, um, but there's only so many of us. So, uh, so we could certainly use help. Uh, the other category of things that the advocacy committee could work on is uh, helping to support the priorities of the uh, higher level PTA organizations. So there's a, P, there's a state level PTA organization, uh, there's a national level PTA organization. Uh, they both have advocacy committees that are especially working on legislation at the state level or at the national level. And so what our advocacy committee can do is gather information on what they're working on, what they're trying to support, and then communicate that information to the membership so that we can talk about how you all can help out with the uh, with supporting these various laws that may or may not get passed or, or potentially opposing laws that we don't want to get passed, things like that. Uh, but again, if this, if this seems like something that you might be interested in, please just send the PTA an email. Great. Thank you so much, Eric. And now we're on to our other vice president, Kristen, who has been managing the uh, the chat fantastically. Thank you so much for helping us. Uh, yeah, no problem. Happy to help. Uh, good evening, everyone. And maybe I don't know if you want to do change back to the other screen uh, for the meeting minute. So I've got just two updates. Um, first, uh, regarding the entrepreneurship fair, steady progress is being made there. I've uh, been working uh, closely uh, with Principal Nelson to identify a date where we could offer a free sort of workshop for the students in fourth and fifth grade um, to give them some what we're calling business basics around, you know, how do you start a business, marketing, pricing, all of that. I mean, it's going to be a quick soundbite for them uh, with some additional resources. And so uh, we're going to be holding an assembly on March 30th um, from 2.15 p.m. to 2.55 p.m. Um, for the fourth and fifth grade students. Um, and that will be ahead of the actual entrepreneurship fair, which will take place on uh, May 13th, um, uh, along with the spring fair. Um, and so we're still actively looking for members to help with some of the planning for that. Our committee meeting will also be tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. And so um, if you are interested in participating, please, by all means, please um, send an email that we need as many voices as we can get to get this off the ground. Um, the other quick update as well um, is with regard to the nominations committee. Um, again, as always, we are looking for volunteers. I'm making a plea. I'm begging. <laughs> we need as many volunteers as we can get. This is the collective effort. And so I encourage each of you all as parents. I know many of us work full time. We may do other volunteer work. 
adoring any number of things on top of, oh yeah, taking care of our children. And so um, I think if you have even just an inkling, a little bit of time, please sign up for one of the many committees there where we need your support, nominations as well. I think probably of all of the committees, it's probably, uh, I think Joey said it best, probably the least amount of work <laughs> in some ways, but, but it's important. And I think, again, we don't expect it to be too onerous at any of the committees. I think a little bit of time goes a long way. So um, if you're able to pitch in and help, great. If you are starting to think about also, Serving in the future, that would also be helpful as a number of parents with older children are cycling off, their kids are moving on to middle school. Um, so we need um, additional voices um, to be a part of the, the important work of the PTA. So I'll stop there. If anyone has questions, feel free to put them in the chat or to share them here in the space. Um, Carito is asking, what would we like volunteers to do? Everything, agreed. I know. I think uh, what I'll, I'll speak quickly on the entrepreneurship um, committee with the meeting that we'll have tomorrow. We want to identify what the guidelines are for the students regarding what sort of businesses they can um, uh, offer for the fair itself. So we want to have some language put together with that. Um, we're also looking to bring in any sort of speakers, individuals who have experience of business who might be able to help facilitate that business basics workshop. Um, and then later on, probably in April, we'll start to sort out what does it look like the day of on the ground, table set up, that sort of thing. So, um, so it really is just just offering your own experience and ideas as what we're looking uh, to do with entrepreneurship here. Um, and um, we'll also need you know publicity for these events um, and work you know like she said working the day of, but also working with the school. Beforehand, we're going to have a, a teacher who's going to be a liaison with the school working with the fair. Um, so having a person who can talk to those, uh, talk to that individual and make sure that we're all on the same page and have everything that we need. Um, and I would say definitely we need volunteers to join the board too. It's personally, um, I found a lot of fulfillment from serving. Uh, it, I feel so much more involved with my children. Um, and their education and their school and that I'm contributing to making it a better place. And that's the whole point. That's why we send our kids here. That's why we live here because it's a great school. Um, so I hope we can all help to uh, improve it. So please let us know if you're interested in serving. And I see a hand raised, um, Kristen Eagle. Yes, I just wanted to ask, um... I just didn't know any information about the about this fair. So is it school wide or is this for like the older um, students? So for the entrepreneurship fair, um, we're opening up to fourth and fifth grade. Um, if they want to have a business that they yeah, have a table set up, but the spring fair in general is open to everyone. And so for okay. us to purchase um, from all grade levels uh, and engage, but specifically those who will be permitted um, to have a business presence at the fair will be fourth and fifth grade. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question about end of the year celebrations. So typically the PTA does help with the end of the year uh, presentation, uh, graduations. We usually get them something, whether it's t-shirts or some sort of gift, uh, both for kindergarten graduation and fifth grade. Um, and we work with the school to see what is the best plan for that. And uh, Principal Nelson and I have already had a few discussions as to what we're going to do for this year. Uh, if anybody would like to help support that, that would be great. We would love somebody to help plan all those. So if you're interested. Um, but uh, we're still working on what those plans exactly will be. There's also a question from Liz about what are all the committees. Um, there are a lot of committees. <laughs> uh, our biggest committee is definitely Teacher and Staff Appreciation Committee. That's the most active. Um, we also have a book sale committee, very crucial. We do have one person who is leading that, and we have a second very possible one. So if somebody were to join that committee, it would be more of a supporting role, supporting the chair. Um, we also have... Uh, I would the like nominations to, the nominations committee. Um, Soon to be advocacy. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, and one, one thing that Jill did a great job of was uh, putting up a, a web page on our website. It's all the different volunteering possibilities. So it has all the committees listed on there. So um, well, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of teacher and staff appreciation, I'm just wondering where we stand with plans for the spring event. Uh, that's my report. Oh, <laughs> the report. I'm yeah. sorry. Great segue. Oh, yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Um, Rita Waters, who's on Zoom, and I, Jessica O'Rourke, uh, this is a proclamation, I think. Um, <laughs> we are willing to be part of the nomination committee again. Um, this will be Karita's last year, so this don't she can't do it again anymore. Oh. Um, thank you for your service, Karita. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, but and I believe that we need a third person to join us. And the nominations committee, I can say more about it, is <laughs> it is the lightest lift, I think. And it's really fun because you just get to ask other people to do the work of being on the board. <laughs> You're not actually doing it yourself. So if you're interested in not being on the board, <laughs> this is a great thing to join us. Um, but seriously, um, I guess there are a few people, as Kristen was saying, whose kids are graduating from Greenville Elementary, so there will be some positions to fill, or maybe some people who have served for a year and said, okay, I'm ready to, to do other things. Um, and so if you are thinking of wanting to learn more then um please do reach out to Karita or I um and I'm fine with putting my email in the chat if you want I can give it to you um and we will also be reaching out to some of you as well that we feel like we'd love to have your um skills and expertise and um hearts I feel like most of it is just really about willingness and interest and caring um, about supporting the school teachers and staff and um, the students and what's happening here and the parents. It's just kind of helping to build community. Um, the jobs themselves, we can certainly share more about, but I think that um, most people could do all the jobs. <laughs> so. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for volunteering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service. Many years. <laughs> um, great. Thank you so much. Uh, here we get cake if we volunteer. <laughs> I will make you a cake if you volunteer. <laughs> if you volunteer, yeah. you get to buy mm -hmm. cake with PTA funds. <laughs> <laughs> then you can have a slice of cake. Debit card. <laughs> You can even use a credit card. Oh, um, I'd like not to share like a little anecdote from today based on the or related to the entrepreneurship fair. This is like not helpful. It was just a fun story. So I was subbing for third grade today, and a young woman came up to me, a third grade young woman came up to me and she said, Do you want to buy? I don't know what she said. She's like, we have something her and her friend were selling. And I was like, tell me more about it. She's like, well, it's slime. <laughs> and I like, how much is this slime? And she said, five dollars. But for you, <laughs> you get three dollars. Five dollars, but really is two dollars. So I write in, but she's a third grade. So um, okay. yeah. Oh, sorry, I think that was still up from my question earlier. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um and I did put the I could put the email again in the chat too if people are interested in volunteering. Or Kristen can do that. I don't have to. Thank you. Um, okay, so I will deliver my report. Um, the first thing is about the spring fair. So 
The Spring Fair before COVID was a big deal and was a fantastic part of this community. So I'm hoping we can bring it back to at least part of that wonder that it was. Um, the entrepreneurship Fair is definitely going to be part of it, but I also want it to be a bigger event so it can draw people, not just from our school, but also from the community in general. Um, so the goal is to have somebody providing food. We're still working on that. We have one, now we have two possible venues that could provide food, but we're still narrowing down exactly what we want to do. Um, we also still, I still need to contact Public Works um, and the fire department to see if they can come and bring a vehicle so that kids can play on it. It's going to be on Saturday, May 15th. Um, the school and I are working hard to make sure that everything that we need to do is done and that we have the support from our teachers and staff in order to make this happen. Um, and we also wanted to have some sort of inflatables or some sort of activity that the kids can do. Um, so we've got lots of ideas. I'm hoping we can make it all happen. And uh, I know at least it's going to happen, um, but the details as to what's going to be there, I do not have narrowed down yet. Sure. Yes. It's the 13th. Yes. Yes. Oh, is that I think you said 15th. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Saturday, May 13th. That is definitely the date. I can tell you the two things that my kids remember the most about today. Yeah. The cherry picker. The I idea of Oh, yeah. Yeah. Public Works or private company or whatever. Like that was the thing. And then um, the music teacher, I forget what her name was. Morrison. Morrison, yeah. yeah. She did um, a talent show one year at the Free Fair, like the kids' talent oh, show. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. It was a big drop. So, I don't, I don't It might be a little later. <laughs> I'm not sure, but those are the two things my kids have remembered. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you. Anything is possible at this point. We'll see what we can do. So, if anybody would like to help out with that as well, I, I definitely would appreciate some more help. <laughs> um, so the other thing that I wanted to update people about is our teacher request program. So we have put aside a fund for teachers to get things that they can't get otherwise, whether they're not getting them from parents who are donating them or from their own money or from the school, uh, things that really will complete a project uh, that will complete their classroom in some way. So we have a form that's been dis distributed to the teachers and staff in which they can request things for us to purchase and then give to them. Um, and uh, think every request does have to be approved by the school to make sure that it is a safe request. But other than that, we we are ready to move forward with this program where we're hoping we can get some entrance soon. Um, so any teachers or staff that are there, make sure to check your email and make sure you see that form. And if you have a request, uh, go ahead and put it in. Um, so that was the end of my report. Did anybody have any questions? I just want to make sure we're not. Uh, you are you keeping that in this chat? No, I didn't Did you want to mention the restaurant at night? To... Yes, yes, okay. thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, we have set up a restaurant night with Franklin's restaurant on April 25th. Um, and the nice thing about Franklin's is it's not just the restaurant and it's not just for dinner. So you could go to Franklin's, you could go to the store, and we still get a percentage of that. You could go have dinner, or you could have lunch, or you could have breakfast. Well, it'd be a it'd be an early, it'd be a late lunch, a late breakfast, but um, the entire day from 11 to 9, anybody who goes to Franklin's, we will get a percentage of that. So it's a really powerful fundraiser, and Franklin's is pretty awesome, too. So please uh, put that on your calendar, April 25th, go have dinner, buy some stuff. What do you have to do to get the... PTA. Like I think we when we did it before Franklin's, I think we had to tell the server and and they put the end our receipt in a separate envelope. Uh, it might be different now, but it wasn't just like every general public. We had to actually mention it or ask for it or something. So Sarah, who wasn't able to come today, she has all the details and she's gonna be working on a flyer cool. so that everybody has the information that they need in order to get us those donations. <sighs> Um, sorry. One other quick comment from the chat, um, going back to the spring fair, mm -hmm. uh, for you to note that the fifth graders also used to sell pizza uh, to get money for their end of year party as well. Oh, didn't I? 
Okay, good to know. Um, and the food is delicious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I would love uh, if anybody has any other additional questions. Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, a question that I have is um, when exactly um, is the right time during these meetings to talk about stuff that is not on the agenda? Not right so now. Far, the parents are raised and Chinese and uh, suggest other things to discuss. Um, is it on the reminders? Like it, it would be good, like as a suggestion to have an item for that. Okay. Okay. Like a new new business to have uh, a time and space. So yeah, yeah. So, I can definitely include that. Thank you. So um I asked my kid, so I'm going to this meeting. What do you want me to put down the back? What what do you need? And he said, we should have two places to get the food from in the cafeteria because it takes too long to get the food. This other day, I was there like for 30 minutes that I ran out of time and not out of life right, yes. to wait. And I, I couldn't eat. Thing today, yeah. They don't have time to eat because by the time they get their food, the teachers are already saying it's time to pack up. Yeah. 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 If we really need to think through with this school. Uh, we need to have enough staff and people in lines, whatever it's needed. Uh, they need to have at least half of that half an hour to actually yes. eat. Yeah. Right? So everybody needs to get their plate in 15 minutes. Right? Not sure exactly how to approach this. You know, it's a direct conversation with Mr. Nelson or uh, to. And then I asked uh, something else, and he said, Oh, I would love to have baking classes. <laughs> but this, I think it's a more general question of, of what kind of electives or free school programs are you offering and how to probably advertise those or increase the, the different things that you can offer the kids, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could look into that and uh, yeah, ideas. Yeah, that'd be a fun after school club or something to yeah. Like baking club. Yeah. yeah. I just learned today that there's a dance club too. Mm -hmm. Friday mornings and there's an ASL club on Monday afternoons. So <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. How do people um find out about this? And yeah. I, my understanding is you need to sign up at the beginning of the year. And if you don't sign up at the beginning of the year, no, we get it in know. a newsletter. The yeah. Friday newsletter that um, the teacher sends out. That's how I found out. About okay. That. And then ASL, yeah, a, yeah, the ASL, the, the dance club, club the yeah. sports club. Well, actually, my kid has come home and said, "Hey, cricket is going to be, you know, we're going to have a cricket yeah. class." And I'm like, "No, nah. yeah." So actually, my son has mentioned it, but I also get it from the speaker. He's in the speaker Miss Williams class every Friday. The newsletter she sends out. It has the list of whatever club or whatever. Oh, I was going to say, so we didn't just get it at the beginning of the year and then that was it? It was like, mm, no. Was yeah, no, every Friday year. we get the newsletter and it's the flyer attached to her email. So it's like the regular, what they worked on for the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what it's spirit. Kind of like, so it's not the sign language. Right? So like, no, I know. The sign language club they had in the fall and then they're doing it again in the spring and it's like, sessions or something so they just like there was a flyer that says it starts on this day and it runs this many weeks but like a dance club I I don't know maybe the teachers over here but like that runs long that's maybe like all year long or yeah I think the teachers okay so totally correct me teachers that wrong but um I think the teeth it's 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 like a parent can't run it in the school a teacher has to do it and the teachers uh, like get a stipend for it or get I don't, know that. I don't know. There's some incentive for teachers, it's tiny incentive for teachers to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and they just do whatever they are interested in, right? So, like, if the teacher wants to do this extra little <laughs> thing and they love, you know, baking, <laughs> right? Or, 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 like, you know, then they have that option to, like, just on their own, like, sort of do all of the logistics to get it started and run it for as long as they want, whenever they want. That's sort of the, but but it would be really nice. Like when we first came to Greenbelt Elementary, one of the things the principal was saying at this like 
come to our school with the kindergartner event was we have like 70 after school clubs. Like that was one of the big things that we took away. I was like, oh my gosh, they have so many cool things after school. And um, but even at that time, it was hard to find a list anywhere. It was just very like yeah so so that i think is a great sort of takeaway that like if that information could be aggregated yeah. somewhere and, and it might not be possible like if i needed a teacher on a whim and like i have more energy this month i'm going to do like a random club right now but but even then it could be like added to some list yeah. and the instructor sent the email out too sorry i was just yeah, thinking yeah, so right. we got the sports club and dance club an email directly from Mr. Robles and also in the oh, newsletter. Really ASL that. came from whoever's running it. I don't know. I have a lot of emails I check. But yeah, yeah. yeah, so I have seen it multiple times. I don't know if it's where they got my email from, if it's just every parent or what, but I get a lot of emails about the clubs. Yeah, so. I never got one, but I'm not yeah. sure if it's because my kid is in second grade and uh, I was interested in the chess club and I asked Mr. T and he said it only starts from third grade onwards. I didn't even know there was a chess Wonderful to have this up on the school's <laughs> website. Yeah. It needs to be the, I mean, I don't know. the advocacy uh committee tackle gathering all this information and the contact and then at least putting it on our site the pta site that's something people are it's like think is of value and so, i think it's hard to say whether it's better to not have a list or have an incomplete list i think it would be really hard for the pta to maintain like a accurate list. yeah that's true i mean in some situations the half accurate list is better than nothing but i think in some situations it's worse so maybe instead of talking to Wheeler about getting something else on the school site, I don't know. I don't know. It's a reasonable thing to be said. Yeah. See, okay. See, see, see. I guess the wheel for that. Uh, I feel like when I first came here, there was a list of all the clubs. Because I remember looking at it with a first grader and being like, oh, look at all this cool stuff. But then everything was third grade on. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And so I was really disappointed. They used to have a Brian, They used to have a relationship with the, you know, the Greenbelt they still City do. Recreation. Well, but they're not coming here anymore. The art collection. Yeah, yeah, the art. They used to have art classes that were done in the school, and that my understanding is that it's not happening. Yeah. So, um, one of one of the people I know, she works for the rec department, and she approached me saying, if there was enough interest from Greenbelt Elementary students. They could arrange a class in which they're picked up and transported, but everybody needs to sign up, and it needs to be like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. It has to be a plan. Why them up and transport yeah. them though. Yes, yes, like yes, that's just hard to bring one person here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Bring her back. Yeah, like, yeah. they like, have like parents coming to the art project with them, and it was actually really well attended. Yes, that's what I couldn't imagine them taking 15 kids, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> higher class. <laughs> uh, art, maybe, um, mm -hmm. like, he wasn't necessarily the mm -hmm. Like, they brought in somebody, mm -hmm. and um, it was really well attended. It was actually a lot of fun. Like, you have kind of guided art, it wasn't really superstructure and just like hey this is what we're working on today here's your supplies mm -hmm. but it was just, and this is different from of course what ingrid is right right okay yeah, ingrid is like during the school day like oh during it with the like, instruction integrated art i had a separate thing that i wanted to ask Is there anything else that you think you can mention from chat? I wanted to ask about um, a fifth grade evening. So um, I can't remember if the PT did it or just some parents did it, but there was um, an evening where alumni came back. So like current sixth graders from Greenwood Elementary who kids, students would come back and, and we, they, invited the fifth grade students to come. So I know there's been certain private events about like, information for parents and where to go and what to expect. But like, I thought it was really neat at the time 
that the students were, and it was like the big push was like, we don't want parents asking questions. We don't want parents, I mean, they have to be like supervised. You can't just like put them in a room together, but, um, but it was really like student led and, you know, question and answer, what the heck am I getting into? So I'd be happy to put that to, like with some assistants, put that together. I think it was, so do we have an April meeting? We do, we do have okay. a schedule. Okay, I think it was at one of the regular PTA meetings. It was like the second 30 minutes, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be like maybe a Friday night and you get a bunch of cookies or something. Like it doesn't have to be complicated, um, but I would maybe need one or two other people just to help me with logistics. Yeah, we I love that. They bring in sixth graders to talk oh, to the parents, yeah. like parents ask mm -hmm. questions. I know there was one before the pandemic, I think. Yeah, I yeah, but, know, but it's just basically. Yeah, there was actually yeah. like, yeah. I mean, my daughter's in sixth grade now. So, like, I mm -hmm. think it's like in my third time or third time, but mm -hmm. I think it's totally helpful to listen to these kids. And the parents were able to say, like, what's it like? Is there a lot of fights? Are there, mm -hmm. you know, are you feeling challenged? Is there support? Like, yeah. So, for the parents who are not, the kids with sixth grade, yeah, I thought mm -hmm. it was great. And like, I don't remember the kids' name, but they were very articulate and like, yeah, they, they did a great job. They did a great job, and they were like not intimidated by a bunch of parents, like, throwing questions at them about Yeah, and for people who have younger kids, that'd be helpful. That'd be great. Yeah. And I think they made an effort to get kids from various schools too, like Greenbelt Middle, but also whatever else you might feed into, like oh. charter schools or specialty programs or language. Just maybe a smaller fraction of the population, so people less. I mean, if we only have limited effort, like, you need to be a little bit so, Yeah, but like my daughter and Jessica's daughter, uh, so her dad now, you know, so that went to school and graduated. And it was a lot about being out there at the same time. But yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, I right. found it really informative. You know, just kind of, okay. No one looked up. So yeah, so can we kind of chat too about this um, really yeah. quickly just to add to it, which side note, I think great idea. Um, I think Karina noted that also in the past there was a field trip to Greenbelt Middle. I don't know who Karina went on that field trip. I think the school organized, the um, Greenbelt Elementary organized that for Greenbelt Middle. Yeah. And then just a comment that uh, uh, from one of our parents that uh, their son, who I believe maybe in fifth grade, is a little bit anxious about what's going to happen uh, in middle school and that it could be very insightful to hear from some current sixth graders. Um, and I can also say, I know for sure my son too is like, <gasps> middle school, middle school. <laughs> so, so I think having that sort of direct connection would be very powerful um, for all of them. Yeah, so I, I don't wanna make this another committee, but I think if one or two other people had like an hour to talk with me on Zoom and get some action items, I think it would be, it would be hard. Mm -hmm. And I'll add one other thing, which is that uh, PTA meeting that uh, Genevieve is remembering also had um, the Greenbelt Middle School uh, PTA president and I think secretary come and, and talk about things. Uh, yeah. So they, if we do get something like this off the ground, they might be good people to talk to if, they're, yeah. if their PTA organization is still active. I wonder if we could do like yeah. teacher PTA, like adult representatives from the middle school with adults in one room, and then like students with students in another room, and then halfway through, like switch. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, need people to bounce your videos off of. So I just posted in the chat um, that we need one to two people to sign up for this middle school transition work, mm -hmm. at whatever form it takes. Um, yeah. I mean, do you, you want to include your email or do you want it to sure. go to? Um, uh, maybe it's better just to send it to the okay. PTA email and then Jill can forward it to me or, or, or somebody. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see you've already got a volunteer, Andrea Waters. <laughs> He's interested. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Great. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, did anybody else have any questions or comments or things we'd like to you'd like us to talk to the administration about? Um, I've been taking notes so that I can send out an email after this to ask a number of these questions of them. Well, who's doing teacher and staff appreciation right now? So we have a couple parents who are working on it. Um, did you want all their names? Yeah, I'd like to help them. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> um, so I definitely know Cara Powell is one of them. Okay. Um, and 
honestly off the top of my head, I can't remember the other people's names, but I do have a list, so I can send that to you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Just who is the teacher and staff appreciation? Like who's leading that for the spring? Yeah, technically Cara is leading it. Uh, Jessica also helps out and Ellie helps, helps out. And then we have- No. No, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Like I said, I couldn't remember exactly. That was my job with the Yeah, there's an email. Now I think I've changed. But I think it's important that Jessica did, um, you know, I, I don't want to, it may not be as um, having more to care of for the holiday teacher appreciation. Um, I don't, I don't know the status of what's happening, and especially since Jessica just rolled, she had to go. What, what, what exactly again is happening with teacher? You know, wanted to circle back what's happening with teacher staff appreciation. Um, so I don't know if there's any type of regular meeting. I mean, when I no, okay, because when I was helping with this in the for the um, December event, um, it was there was. Um, I think some confusion about how to get it off the ground and um, some last minute action that was evil that we were able to pull off. But I think we need probably a larger lead time. And I don't, I personally haven't checked back in with Kara to see if she's interested in going forward for the spring event. So I don't know if anyone else has, but I haven't. It's the first week of May, by the way. Hmm. So it's the first week of May. So I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I I think we need some clarification on leadership here. Okay. Uh, okay. So, that, is there anything else that people would like to bring up or have questions about? Oh, who are we? So, who are we? I'm oh, sorry, Jeff. I'm also reading here. Um, what about lunchtime? What was the, do we need to, who do we reach out to? What's the best way to handle that? Did you get talking about getting two lines or whatever, three lines, I don't know. Uh, so my plan was to bring this up to Mr. Nelson and say what the concern is. Um, I have the same concern too. My children talk about the exact same thing. Um, that's actually why they bring lunch now yeah. because they don't even want to wait in the line. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the action items I wanted to talk with them about. If there's some other action that people would like to take, if anybody wants to be CC'd on that email so we can see the response, I would be happy to have to you. Uh, just shoot me a message and I can do that. Um, I have a general question, Joe, about um, why we only have like 50 people in the PTA, uh, given that we have like 600 kids, maybe 400 families, right? So are we below the average or is this like what is expected in all the PTAs uh, countrywide? Uh, I, I'm wondering like, uh, is, uh, do we need to do some action at the beginning of the school year, like a uh, move on the school at uh, the time that people come to pick up their kids and then talk to parents or this wouldn't work because you know, I mean, you're trying in the past and people work. Well, know, we but. did do we did do that. I'm sure Eric can talk more about the. I have no idea what the numbers are, like nationwide or locally or anything like that. I feel like we should have more people, more people active, or lift the school up in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, this year we did have, um, well. We were out with flyers um, several days at pickup, um, you know, trying to talk. <laughs> People run in the other direction, right? you know, and at the meet the principal, and at the meet the principal event, we had a booth, but that was during the middle of the day, so I realized that was harder for a lot of people to get to. But um, yeah, there have. I mean, and also, of course, this this, this cycle has been unique. I don't really have any knowledge of what was done like beforehand or what membership was like before COVID, but I'm sure Eric can speak to that. Oh, I can talk a little bit about our membership anyway. I don't know about national trends, but uh, uh, our PTA's membership has ranged from about 30 to about 100 that they managed to get one year. I'd love to know what they were doing that year. Um, they have at times in the past been a membership uh, chair, somebody who's specifically tasked with finding ways to um, uh, to tell parents about the PTA and encourage them to sign up. And you know, there are all kinds of things that we could do if we got the 
you know, the volunteer resources to make it happen, to like setting up a little booth in front of the school to pick up and drop off the first week or two, things like that, would certainly help with membership. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts. Or, yeah. I'm wondering if we could challenge everyone who's here and on the call to bring one person in. Hopefully, you know, at least one other parent from your child's classroom and encourage them to join, participate if you're not. Because I think to their point, there have been lots of drives, uh, some very successful, others not as much. But I honestly think it's that personal touch that makes yeah. a difference. That's how I was brought in. It's just direct conversation and connection. So I think if we can do that in an organic kind of fashion, grassroots kind of fashion, I think that would also help boost um, engagement and participation. Yeah. I think also COVID really hurt the PTA a lot. It was it was really hard. And so I think we all on the board initially were like, this is going to be a building year. You know, let's let's get back to where we go we were. Let's see if we can bring back some of these activities that were lost. Um, and we've been working really hard to do that. We had a summer babysitter once that was a teacher at a different school in the county, and there was no PTA, and she tried to start one with another teacher, and there was no interest from parents and very little interest from other teachers. So I don't have any other metrics than that one anecdotal story, but there's at least one other school in the county that just doesn't have a PTA, and they tried and Fails. Oh, it was pretty yeah, 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 yeah. one, which is pretty active, so that's good. But I agree, like we, it would be better to have more. That's your broader question. I thought. Oh, sorry. Really quick, I was going to a couple yeah. comments in the chat. So uh, Karita noted that now that Mr. Nelson has brought back award assemblies, that that could be a nice time to recruit members. Um, in the past, we've also traditionally um, gotten a lot of folks at the back to school nights. And that was the year that we had 100 um, participants. I think that was a secret sauce. Yeah. We also um, had numbers that year every meeting. Like every meeting, they were like, we're at 64. Okay, so <laughs> kind of a way to ramp up. Um, so it wasn't kind of ask one person you know, bring one kind of approach. Um, and then they also had phones with online sign up and ask for cash. Not sure if cash sign ups are possible still. Um, and they had a parent who, um, also spoke Spanish the year that they had a large number of, of participants. Mm -hmm. so, oh, that's great. Um, well, thanks. As well. yeah, I would love to get a person on the board who was bilingual who spoke Spanish and could really reach those members. I feel like we're not able to reach them with not having alternate languages. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so I was just going to say, I think, you know, Having two working parents makes it really difficult, and that I think has been the shift over the last several decades. That I, that has to be affecting it, you know. And then people just feeling like that should have out with COVID. Not PTA related, but I also see it with my son's sports. He plays sports all year round, and it's difficult to get coaches to volunteer, yeah. um, parents. I've been team mom for every sport for a year and trying to get parents to sign up for snacks. No one wants to even do that. So I'm also interested in kind of the disconnect now of parents wanting to, what I view as better your child's yeah. <laughs> childhood and experience yeah. and and putting in, like you said, with committees, you know, even if it's just an hour a week or an hour every other week or just buying snacks or whatever the case is, I'm finding it across the board in school and with sports that people just aren't volunteering for whatever reason. Yeah. Back, uh, Brian, again, back in, um, I guess this was like two or three years ago, it was before COVID, um, I was trying to encourage um, another uh, parent of a classmate of my son's to join the PTA. And she said, oh, I went to a meeting, all they want is your money. So we also have to sell what does PTA do for parents as well as right. <laughs> school. I, I agree. Agree. And I think that's enough. And for, and for the children, their children, yeah. So she didn't feel like what we were doing was relevant to her child. And adding any value. And adding, making things easy enough for her as a parent to be part of it, I think was. <laughs> How many did we ask her for? I feel like well, we I think 
Yeah, it's minimal, like the actual membership fee, but then we do ask for, you know, oh, can you help out with give us a gift card? Give us a gift like, card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, don't make that. Yeah. Yeah. And so some people, you know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, that's not easy to be asked repeatedly for things. And so, I mean, that's, I think it's fine that we're asking for them. I'm just saying we also need to say, here's where our successes are. Or this is what we're doing. Make sure people know. Right. Yeah, and since we, I mean, that's just, we just haven't been able to do a lot over the last few years to, you know, because there just hasn't been any in person. I mean, one of our primary goals is community building, and that's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. So, you want to say something? It's my turn. Like, I was talking about this. I'd say, if you look at that line, there was some things that there were actually more things that I really need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like the church is talking about volunteer about like they just were talking everywhere they could go. Um that pipeline is broken. Mm -hmm. There was one um for whatever reason, but I don't think it's here, definitely. Right. Like it's yeah, it's, it's a larger issue, just our community not yeah. wanting to do it. There were two things that I think was helpful. I don't know if it was the year we had hundred or the year after that, that um so yeah, it was. So I Google's driven. <laughs> so it was neat every meeting to say like we now have this many members. We had this many people volunteer between this meeting and the last meeting. They volunteered this many hours. Blah, blah blah. So then and then we had like a running tally. Like so it was neat at the last meeting to like hey there were you know seventy three different people that volunteered this year and they combined to a thousand and one. I don't know, but. Um, so, and then when that, so that was very helpful, that was motivating for me, but then at that point I was like, you know what we should do next year is we should budget, like we budget our money, like we have a projected budget for money, it would be interesting to have, interesting to have a budget for volunteer hours, because a lot of the things that we do want to bring back regularly, you could kind of guess, um, and to have, I don't know, just some sort of, you know, they have like those thermometer charts or something where like, Parents can see, like we, you know, so you're in this year we need 742 volunteer hours, and if you could just give one, then we'll like move that forward. Um, yeah, because I do feel like it's the same small group of people that end up doing like 40 percent of that 700 hours or whatever it is, and it would be it, that might just be a way to like get the message out that like you know there's a lot to do, but it doesn't have to be like you don't have to sign on the dotted line and like give away everything. I will also say, when we were putting together this budget, we were like, oh, how many members do you think we're going to get this year? And you're we like, what if we got like 50? <laughs> and then we got 50. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we reached our goal. And we really, you know, it, it's it's been hard to get those 50. And I, I'm very appreciative to everybody who has done that. Because even though it's only $10 a person, it does add up to our budget. And also, it's just another group of people that we can reach out for. Honestly, I, I don't need your money. I'd rather have your hours and your right. time. Right. Like, That's right. And enthusiasm and interest. And all yeah. Of that. Yeah. 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 I think a number of people have already dropped off. Yep. The, uh, um, <laughs> which I totally get is getting late. Um, <laughs> so I did just want to go through the reminders. Of course, there's the Franklin's uh, restaurant night, um, which is April 27th, right? I'm sorry. Because I've already forgot. Oh, let's keep going. Let me back there. April 27th. Yeah. But again, we're not really asking for your money. Let's ask you for your money. Um, also, if you want to become a member, you can do that on our website or you can do it on the Members Hub. We're welcome to share that. Two uh, more members by next meeting for those who are still on. That's our goal. <laughs> Two more members. Uh, and then we do currently have a meeting scheduled for April 5th at 7 p.m. Um, we'll be sending out a spring break. But it's not going to be that day. <laughs> no, I apologize. I <laughs> yes. Um, we'll figure that out because I I might have a problem. Um, but we will have we hope to have a meeting at April. We honestly are way over our allotted number. We only are required to have five meetings, and yeah. this is our fifth meeting. So if you don't have anything on the agenda for that, we go and we can do the fifth grade thing. We totally can. Yeah. 
Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah. yeah. But, but not for Instagram. Fifth grade is my Um, well, we'll get back I'm to you. Sure. Oh. I, I just want to make sure that I will be here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. And uh, more information to come. Please make sure your email address is active and that you are getting our email. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Good night. And, and more night. It's a really good conversation. It's that was a great conversation. Yeah, thanks for bringing those up. Um, those are topics, hot topics to discuss. Yeah, All right. you know, asking your kids to, you know, <laughs> what to, what should yeah, you bring? I was really fresh. Right? Yeah. Why was it? Oh, thank you. That's one of the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's really good. 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 Good.